Hello and welcome to the Wolf's Den. I'm Dave here with Mary Ellen, and today we are going to be talking about a Game of Thrones Sansa One. Yes. Which essentially kicks us off at the end at the crossroads at the Trident, and it's our first, I guess we'll say, foray into Sansa's mind. Absolutely. We have not yet done this. So it kicks off with us finding out that Ned is not around. Right. The king summoned him earlier that morning. They're going to go hunting for some wild oryx, which essentially are cows. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's it, basically. Sansa's feeding Lady under the table. Septim Mordain tells her that highborn ladies don't feed dogs from the table. Sansa is a smartass and says it's not a dog, it's a direwolf. Right. <laughs> um, so she did sort of have a little bit of a personality for almost a minute. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the Septa tells her that when it comes to her direwolf, she's as willful as Arya, which prompts her to then ask where Arya is. Sansa tells her that she wasn't hungry. And then she thinks to herself that she had probably gone to the kitchen and weeded out breakfast with some, like, cook's boy or something. <laughs> Earlier that morning. Like, Arya got up early. She wasn't waiting to have breakfast with Sansa. No. She's moving on with her day. is going to go do whatever is going to be doing. Uh, Mordain tells her that she needs to tell Arya to wear something nice because they're going to go to the Queen's Pavilion or whatever this thing is, Wheelhouse. Yes. And they're going to be traveling with them and what have you. Sansa says, I'll tell her, but she'll dress the way she always does. May I be excused? You may. Now Sansa starts wandering around a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, she talk, gives us like a little information. This is a huge inn, bigger than any she's ever seen, but the king's party has now swollen to like 400 people. Right. So obviously it can't accommodate that. Oh, one thing I wanted to make note of um, really quickly. She thinks about uh, how she's going to marry Joffrey and how she did not really know Joffrey yet, but she was already in love with him. I will say that that's good writing on George's part because when you're 14 and the first time you see like a cute boy, you might think something like that. She's 11. 11, right. I'm sorry, I was thinking of the show. 11, you might think something like that. So, like, those little immature thoughts are not evil. They're pretty common. And not only is he a cute boy who's a little bit older, but he's also the heir apparent. So, her being completely smitten at this point. I don't is... think anyone really blames her for no, being No, no, I, I was just making note of that. So, yeah. Uh -huh. Sansa gives us a good description of how big the party is at this point, like you said. Um, and then she finally finds uh, Arya. Just a, a, br oh. a brief aside that I would like to make about the structures that are common in this area. Sure. They're all made of white stone. Oh, okay. Interesting. These are the... They're very close to white walls. These are obviously the stone that was torn down from white walls when Blood Raven ordered the castle right. torn down. And the area is sown with salt. Something tells me that salt pans, which is not that far from here... Mm. It's probably called salt pans because of what Blood Raven did at White Walls, where all the salt ended up right there, basically killing everything in the area. Yeah, and that this structure was built out of the stone that was White Walls, and almost, almost certainly, anyways, some innkeeper doesn't have the money to import white marble to build his inn out of. You want to know? It's no, not at all. What's interesting about salt? Salt can destroy crops from growing, right? But Salt also preserves food. Yes. So in some ways it, it can be a killer of things, but in other ways it can be a preservation of things, that, that food that people need to sustain their life. Basically, it'll kill vegetation. Right, right. But it will preserve meat. Yeah, so. So. Anyway. Inter interesting. Um, she bumps into Arya over on the banks of the Trident. Uh, Arya is attempting to hold Nymeria and get her brushed because Nymeria is all dirty like Arya. Yes. Absolutely. So it's like another another perfect parallel between the wolf and the uh, prospective owner. Nymeria is covered in mud and Arya is trying to brush it out and Nymeria is not cooperating. Kind of like Arya probably would not cooperate if someone was trying to do that to her. 
Um, Sansa tells her what Septa Mordain said, which was to dress nicely. Arya says, kick rocks. I plan Actually, on... I like this even better. Because okay. Sansa's like, Septa Mordain said that you need to wear something pretty. We're going to be traveling in the Queen's wheelhouse with Princess Marcella. And Arya just goes, I'm not. <laughs> Micah and I are going to ride upstream to look for rubies at the Ford. Rubies? Sa- said Sansa. Lost. What rubies? Arya gave her that look. Like she was so stupid. <laughs> Rhaegar's rubies. This is where King Robert killed him and won the crown. Sansa looks at her in complete disbelief. You can't look for rubies. The princess is expecting us. The queen invited us both. I don't care, said Arya. <laughs> the wheelhouse doesn't even have windows. You can't see a thing. And then Sansa's like, what the heck would you want to even see? It's all just fields and farms and hold fast sorry it's like no it isn't you'd know that if you came riding with us sometimes Sansa hates riding gets you all soiled and dusty and sore mm-hmm. Arya is still fighting with Nymeria throughout this whole thing She's, yeah hold still I'm not hurting you blah 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 and then she turns to her and she's like when we were crossing the neck I counted 36 flowers I had never seen before and Micah showed me a lizard lion which I think is basically an alligator. Yeah, it says lizard lion is the Westeros sea term for crocodiles or alligators, which are commonly found in the swamps of the neck. Which I still, to this day, find super interesting because it seems like that far north, I mean, it would be too cold for a cold-blooded animal to live. So maybe George's his... are very special. Yeah, absolutely. Jo- George's lizard lions can survive it being way colder than real alligators and crocodiles and Absolutely. reptiles as a whole can. Um, Sansa gives us information about how long they had been traveling. She says they had been 12 days crossing the neck, rumbling down a crooked causeway through an endless black bog, and she hated every moment of it. The air was damp and clammy. George is giving us all of these um, meteor- meteorologic meteor meteorological yes uh conditions yeah i don't even know if it's a word whatever and uh describing the terrain of westeros to us dense thickets of half drowned trees so this is a bog very marshy area and then she describes how it's so narrow that you actually have to camp right on it which is kind of important when thinking about what it would take to attack moat kaelin you have to stay on this narrow path Basically, to attack Mo Kalen, you're coming up the path a couple guys maybe wide at a time, maximum, while arrows are raining on you from all sides. That's the reason that you can't get past the neck. Mm-hmm. If you try to wander off, you get stuck in quicksand, or lizard lions are lurking there looking like a log, and the next thing you know, you're getting attacked. It is pure hell attempting to attack Mo Kalen. Not to mention the fact that the Krannigmen are probably shooting arrows at you from every direction on top of that. None of which, Sansa thinks to herself, except with the people shooting uh, arrows, stopped Arya. Arya went out in this area and went uh, searching for anything she could think was cool. She found some flowers, some purple and green ones, and she brought them to Ned. And Sansa had hoped that Ned would be like, you know, uh, act like a lady. Instead, he just thanked her for the flowers, and that made Sansa mad. Uh, and then it turned out the purple flyer flowers were called poison kisses and Arya got a rash. And then the next thing you know, she's got this ugly rash. And then she heard from some lady to put mud on it. So now Arya is covered in mud. And, it, and in Sansa's eyes, this just gets like worse and worse. Like if it couldn't, she thinks it can't get worse. And then it just kind of does. I think Micah's the one who told her to do it. But uh, Sansa thinks that she looked like some ignorant bog woman. Oh, okay. That's what it was. Um... Continuing on, Arya yeah. is still attempting to brush Nymeria. <laughs> this this whole exchange happens while Arya is trying to do that. Now Arya seems to have completed one of Nymeria's sides, and she's trying to flip her so she can do the other gotcha. side. Yep. Um, and then Arya is like, last week we found a haunted watchtower, and the day before we chased a herd of wild horses. Um... Sansa's like, you're not supposed to be leaving the column. Arya's like, I didn't go far. Anyways, is always with me. So I'm not worried. <laughs> yes, and she's like, sometimes I don't even go off. 
Sometimes I just let think it's fun to ride along with the wagons and talk to the people. And this is where you really get to see the difference between mm-hmm. Sansa. Sansa is stuck up as hell. Mm-hmm. Arya finds all of the people. The people in the wagons, the free riders. All, she finds all of them interesting, and she likes to talk to all of them. Mm-hmm. Sansa's repulsed by the idea of talking to one of those people. Repulsed. Like, absolutely repulsed by the notion that her sister even talked to one of those people. Yes. So while Sansa is incredibly stuck up, Arya is incredibly humble. Down to earth. Yes. Arya doesn't care who you were born. Arya just cares who you are. Mm-hmm. Whereas Sansa only cares about who you were born. That's yes. You're absolutely right. Everywhere opposites everywhere the war with that one. For reals. Uh, at this point, Sansa is running out of patience. You have to come with me. You can't refuse the queen. Septim Mordain will expect you. Uh, Arya is ignoring her. <laughs> Arya didn't even acknowledge that she said that. <laughs> And she's like, come on, there's going to be lemon cakes and tea. Well, then Nymeria runs away and Arya's like, come back here. And then she says that. Yeah, right. Anyway, so... Uh, this is the most telling thing ever. Okay, go ahead. Sansa's like, why would you want to ride a smelly old horse and get all sore and sweaty when you can recline on, pillow f- on feather pillows and eat cakes with the queen? And Arya just looks straight at her and casually just goes, I don't like the queen. Yes. And then <laughs> she, she won't even let me bring Nymeria. Sansa's like floored at Absolutely this Absolutely floored by this. Uh, so Arya goes on to say, and she won't even let me bring Nymeria. Sansa says, you can't bring a wolf into a royal wheelhouse. Marcella's scared of them. Arya goes, Marcella's a little baby. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, still wrangling around with Nymeria. <laughs> yes. And she threw down the, her brush because she f- had completely failed at this point. Yes. And just yells, bad wolf. Um, Sansa was happy by the f- by watching her sister's failure made her yeah. happy. Yeah, <laughs> she couldn't help but smile a little. Um, she scratched Lady behind her ears the way she liked and gave Lady a little hug. Uh, lady licked her cheek, saw giggles, and she hears Arya saying, I don't care what you say, I'm going out riding. Then, gods be true, Arya, sometimes you act like such a child. I'll go by myself then. It'll be ever so much nicer that way. Lady and I will eat all the lemon cakes and have the best time without you. Arya... <laughs> She turned to walk off, but Ario sh- shouted after her, They won't let you br- bring Lady either. She was gone before Sansa could think of a reply. <laughs> <laughs> so in this verbal sparring match, Sansa lost every exchange. Yes. The whole way through, Arya had a witty comeback for her. So it's like the Arya cuts deeper than swords. Arya had a witty comeback for her every time. In the battle of wits that just took place there, Arya outmaneuvered her every step of the way. Definitely did. The queen expects it. I don't care. I don't like the queen. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like, and Sansa couldn't even believe that she said that out loud. I don't even think they're that far away from other people. Arya just doesn't care. No, she doesn't. She's like, I don't think. I don't think the queen's a nice lady. I don't think. I, I don't like her. So yes. I don't really care if she wants me to spend the whole day with her. I would rather do anything else other than sit That's in that box with her. That's something I would say, and you'd be like, Mary day. Ellen. She's like, I'm not sitting in the box with, in that box with that woman for the whole day. I'm not doing it. Um, now she goes and by she we're talking Sansa she starts entering the area where basically the whole royal party is and she there's a great commotion going on uh, she uses Lady to open up a gap so she can see mm-hmm. which I think is kind of funny mm-hmm. she just has Lady walk in front of her and people magically get out, out and of get the, the hell out of the way <laughs> when the dire wolf is walking through so she's like I want to go see what's going on there so she just has Lady walk in front of her yep. and it just parts it's like Moses parting the Red Sea yes she just walks right through and she sees uh, Barristan Selmy and Renly yes this is the first queen. time you meet Barristan or Renly it's the first or, time you meet yeah, any of these guys okay and, uh, and a third man, who I brought this up in a live stream, I want to say before, but I want to bring it up again. Mm-hmm. There is absolutely no logical reason that an honor guard sent to escort the king, which includes three guys. The first two make perfect sense. The king's brother, 
and member of the small council, mm-hmm. and the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard. Absolutely. What the hell is Ilan Payne doing there? The, the executioner. The executioner. <laughs> Who doesn't speak and like... There's no honor in, in sending the executioner. The executioner's job isn't to be there. What the heck is the executioner doing there? Right. Yet Littlefinger and Varys, the only two counselors that were still there basically, and Pycelle, decided to send Ilan Payne. And since Littlefinger's the one who's kind of running the dungeons in spite of the fact that Varys thinks he's the one running the dungeons. I think that Littlefinger sent the executioner there. And listen to this scene right here. The king has gone hunting, but I know he will be pleased to see you when he returns. The queen was saying to the two knights who knelt before her. Yeah, like, it's like Cersei didn't even understand what the hell Ilan Payne yeah. was doing there. She's like, yeah, Barristan and Renly, absolutely. The king will be happy to see you when he gets back. But she didn't say the same thing to Ilan Payne. Right. What the hell is Ilan <laughs> Payne doing here? Even Cersei was confused. Like, why are you here? I don't. I can't for the life of me understand why, why Ilan Payne was there. It me doesn't either. make any sense whatsoever. Um, That's an interesting question. We can add that to our... Asking George if we ever got to ask him basically meaning of a meaningless question. Why was Ellen Payne part of the honor guard? Quote unquote honor guard. <laughs> right. That doesn't make any sense. What's he doing there? Um, then we get the first exchange between Sansa, and you get to basically see that Renly's a fairly jovial guy. And that, oh, yes. And that Renly and Barristan obviously kind of like each other because they talk a lot of shit. To each other. She's like, when Sansa calls him Barristan the Bold, Renly jokes, Barristan the Old. And then, um, Wait, did does, we skip the part she Barristan... meets? She does interact with the Hound here. Alright, you can cover that. No, just because she interacts with him throughout the novels. Okay. At least when they're in the same place. Uh, when the Hound notices how disquieted she is by Ellen Payne's presence, he says, you're shaking, girl. Do I frighten you so much? Uh, and that, that's basically all I wanted to mention. This was the first time she met the Hound. But then, yes, then she engages with, you can pick up with where you are. Yeah, I was trying to re- remember what, uh, I don't. I, I didn't see where you were here. Um, it goes like this. She she observes the men. She doesn't interact with anybody. She interacts with the hound. Um, he and then he said the hound asks Sansa, "Do I frighten you so much?" He did and had since the first time she laid eyes on him. Okay, so she wrenches away from him. Um, Sansa dropped to her knees and wrapped her arms around the wolf. Okay, then a wolf, a man said, and someone else said, Seven Hells, that's a dire wolf. What's it doing in camp? That's when the hound says the Starks use them for wet nurses. Right. Um, And then uh, she gets kind of upset. She's a little embarrassed. Cersei tells Joffrey to go to her, and her prince was there. Leave her alone, Joffrey said. He stood over her, beautiful in blue wool. What is it, sweet lady? Why are you afraid? No one will hurt you. So he's acting all the gallant, you know, the gallant. Yes, put your swords away. The wolf is her little pet. That's all. And he tells and you Sandor. Dog away with you. You're correct. scaring my betrothed. The hound, ever faithful, bowed and slid away. Uh, it was not him, my sweet prince. She tried. It was the other one. She explains it actually wasn't the hound, it was ill in pain. And then the two stranger knights, at this point, she hasn't interacted with them yet still, exchanged a look. Pain, chuckled the young man in the green armor. The older man, in white, this is Barristan, spoke to Sansa gently. Oft times Sir Illyn frightens me as well. As well as he should. The queen, the queen is coming in now too. Even uh, Cersei is like, yeah, he should. He's very creepy. <laughs> like, again, nobody knows why any why this guy's here. Why is this guy here? But then she's like, people should fear the king's justice. If, right. If they don't, you've put the wrong guy in office. And then Sansa finally comes out of her, like, uh, freak-out mode and goes, then surely you chose the right one, your grace. And there's laughter that erupts around her. Well-spoken child, says Barristan, as befits the daughter of Eddard Stark. Um, I am Sir Barristan Selmy of the King's Guard. He introduces her and bow- introduces himself and bows. 
Sansa knew the name, and now the courtesies that Septim Ordain had taught her over the years came back to her. The Lord Commander of the King's Guard, she said, and Counselor to Robert our King. Blah, blah, blah. And she says, and she, uh, even in the far north, the singers praised the deeds of Barrist and the Bold. All of which, yes, were her courtesies, but were true. She's like, I've heard your name. And, yeah. and I don't even pay attention to that much of the night stories, but I do know that basically you're a badass. That, that you're like the most famous guy in the whole realm, basically, when it comes to being a, a warrior. And then here's when jo- uh, Renly comes in now with Barristan the Old, you mean. And he, and he lightens the mood even further yes. by joking around. Yes, he could tell that she was nervous and you and, and lighten the mood and then she immediately feels comfortable. She, they, he even has her make note of the fact that she felt more comfortable after Renly said this. Exactly. Person, the old. He smiles could... at her. Now, wolf girl, if you can put a name to me as well, then I must concede that you are truly our hand's daughter. Joffrey's like, have a cue how you address my betrothed. Have a care. A care, whatever. And, uh. Sansa says, I can answer. And she says, I name you Renly Baratheon. Blah, blah, blah. By your extreme youth. And then Barrison goes, by his extreme youth, he could only be a prancing jack of apes And so I name him. Yes, like, yes. Like, okay, so this is going well. Sansa's on like cloud nine. Yes. This is everything she's ever dreamed of. Talking to famous knights. Like, she's funny. They're funny. We're laughing. This day is like heaven. She's going in the wheelhouse later. This day is like, the best day she's ever lived. Um, so she says, I'm sorry if I offended you, Sir Illin. You know, like, basically yeah, this is Yeah, because then all- I know where he came up in front of her and she was, and he didn't say anything. And then she's like, did I say something wrong? Why won't he speak to me? Lord Renly tells her, he's like, he hasn't been all that talkative since his tongue got ripped out. Right. <laughs> um, or Joffrey adds the uh, part about his tongue being ripped out. He... Brentley just goes, he hasn't been feeling all that talkative these past 14 years. Right. <laughs> um, uh, Joffrey says how Aerys Targaryen had his tongue ripped out with hot pincers. And then the queen comes in with... with uh, she, Cersei's a little witty here. He speaks most eloquently with his sword, however, and his devotion to our realm is unquestioned. Basically, like, you know, he's kind of a dude that is a little creepy. Yes, he doesn't talk, but the guy is really good with that sword. And that's basically what we need him to do. Uh Then, let's not get bogged down by all this stuff. No, it was... It, uh, the queen says that the council needs to talk to her and we're going to have to cancel our afternoon. Oh, yep, that's how that gets and canceled. And then Joffrey, and asks Joffrey to entertain her for the afternoon. Now Sansa's truly on cloud nine. Yes. Sansa hates riding. She said it like ten minutes ago. We but, could go riding, Joffrey said. And then she's like, I love riding. Yes. It made me think of that scene in... Um, Gone Girl? No, it made me think of the scene in um, Coming to America, the first one. Oh, okay. Where uh, Eddie Murphy meets the girl that his dad has arranged for him to marry. And he goes, so what do you like to do? And she's like, anything you like. And he goes, all right, bark like a dog. And she's barking and he goes... Now bark like a dog while hopping on one foot, and she's barking like a dog oh, while hopping yes, on one yes. foot. And he's like, I don't know if I really like this all that much. But, yes. But, like, she just instantly, because her answer is, he's like, what do you like to do? And she's like, whatever you like. And like, Honestly, that's not that crazy either. She's 11 years old, and he's 14. I, I was just saying it made me think of it. Okay. Um. He suggests leaving their dogs behind. Um, he's like, your wolf will spook the horses and my hound and my dog seems to spook you. So let's leave them behind. Yeah, fine. That's uh, that's t- normal. I would have been fine with that. Um, then they go. Mm-hmm. This is the first time you get to see like a slight peek behind the curtain with him. She didn't know if it was safe to leave them behind. And... Joffrey got irritated. Mm-hmm. And he showed his irritation just for like a second. And then he put it behind his courtesies again. <clears throat> showed her his sword. His sword, I call it lion's tooth, all that other crap. And then it was a glorious day, a magical day. They rode all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, they were drinking. Mm-hmm. Um, 
they stop she at a explains i'm fast. not used to drinking this much he says you can drink as much as you want um she says maybe we should go back she was getting dizzy from the wine soon joffrey said the battleground is right up ahead where the river bends that was where my father killed rhaegar targaryen you know he smashed in his chest crunch right through the armor then my uncle jamie killed old eris and my father was king and then he goes what's that sound and sansa heard it too joffrey says i want to go see what it is someone's there sansa said anxiously you're safe with me joffrey says this way beyond in a clearing overlooking the river they came upon a boy and a girl playing at nights and we know who this is this is aria and the butcher's boy yes at first they don't know it's them though yes and then our <clears throat> then sansa recognizes her and, and yells aria like yes i can't just like they, she did in the show she, it was perfect it, she like, did do that perfectly like right where she realized holy crap that's my sister and then go away aria shouted back at them <laughs> what are you doing here leave us alone joffrey glanced from aria to sansa and back again and he's like your sister she nodded, blushing, blah, 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 blah. And who are you, boy? Mm -hmm. This is where Joffrey's true colors, he's now had enough wine that he is not pretending that he's not a complete psychopath. Um, so she goes, um, he goes, who are you? Micah, the boy, muttered. He's the butcher's boy, Sansa said. He's my friend, Arya said sharply. You leave him alone. A butcher's boy who wants to be a knight, is it? Joffrey swung down from his mount, sword in hand. Pick up your sword, butcher's boy, he said, his eyes bright with amusement. Let us see how good you are. Micah stood there, frozen with fear. Joffrey walked toward him. Go on, pick it up, or do you only fight little girls? She asked me to, my lord, Micah said. She asked me to. I think that's really telling as well. Mm-hmm. If Sansa walks up to some lowborn person, she doesn't ask them. She tells them, do this. But Arya saw, met Micah and asked if she he would practice sword fighting. Oh, absolutely. But like she didn't command him to do it. Arya asked if he would. So Joffrey is saying, pick up your sword, pick up your sword. And Micah's like, look, this is only a stick. And he says, and you're only a butcher's boy and no knight. Joffrey lifted Lion's Tooth and laid its point on Micah's cheek below the eye, as the butcher's boy stood trembling. That was my lady's sister you were hitting. Do you know that? A bright bud of blood blossomed where his sword pressed into Micah's flesh, and a slow red line trickled down the boy's cheek. Stop it, Arya screamed. She grabbed up her fallen stick. Sansa was afraid. Arya, you stay out of this. I won't hurt him. Much. Prince Joffrey told Arya, never taking his eyes off the butcher's boy. Arya went for him. <laughs> Arya clobbered him in the back of the head <laughs> with, with her stick. Yes. And she hit him hard enough that she cut the back. The, 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 his head was actually bleeding. Okay. So Arya hit him hard in the back of the head with the stick. Well, because this was bad. This guy, this kid's face was bleeding. I mean, he's cutting the kid's face. I'm not let's, giving it an excuse let's, here. Right, no, so she whacked him. So she walloped him. As she hard. wasn't going to tap him. him. Yeah. She hit him as hard as she could. And she swung I also think it, it's very telling that he's cutting the boy's face. Arya wants him to stop. And Sansa tells her basically, shut up. Stay out of this. Because once again, peasants mean nothing to her. She doesn't care if he carves his face into 57 pieces. Sansa does not care. That's just who Sansa is. Um, Arya swung with both hands. There's a loud crack of the wood split against... Like, she hit him so hard that she actually broke her stick on his head. Yes, so I'll then, read it. Then, yeah, read this. Okay. Um, Sansa slid off her mare, but she was too slow. Arya swung with both hands. There was a loud crack as the wood split against the back of the prince's head. And then everything happened at once, before Sansa's horrified eyes. Joffrey staggered and whirled around, roaring curses. Micah ran for the trees as fast as his legs would take him. Arya swung at the prince again, but this time Joffrey caught the blow on Lion's Tooth and sent her broken stick flying from her hands. The back of his head was all bloody and his eyes were on fire. Sansa was shrieking. No, stop it. No, both of you. You're spoiling it. 
but no one was listening. Arya scooped up a rock and hurled it at Joffrey's head. She hit his horse instead, and the blood bay reared and went galloping off after Micah. Stop it! Don't! Stop it! Sansa screamed. Joffrey slashed at Arya with his sword, screaming obscenities, terrible words, filthy words. Arya darted back, frightened now, but Joffrey followed, hounding her toward the woods, backing her up against a tree. Sansa didn't know what to do. She watched helplessly, almost blind from her tears. Then a gray blur flashed past her, and suddenly Nymeria was there, leaping, jaws closing around Joffrey's sword arm. The steel fell from his fingers as the wolf knocked him off his feet, and they rolled in the grass, the wolf snarling and ripping at him, the prince shrieking in pain. Get it off, he screamed. Get it off. All right, I'm going to cut you off there. So here is... George is very eloquent, I guess, in the way that he writes. Absolutely. Like, he doesn't spell it out for you, but Joffrey was about to kill Arya. He wasn't going to cut her a little bit on the cheek. No. He had backed her up against a tree to the point that she stumbled and fell. And now he's going to kill her. Yep. And Sansa watched all of this happen and for some reason didn't connect that in her like I don't even know if she doesn't even understand Joffrey was going to kill her Mm -hmm. he was trying to kill her he was swinging a razor sharp castle forged steel Mm -hmm. sword Mm -hmm. at her head over and over and over again and the only reason Arya is still alive at this point is because she's quick enough that she was getting away from him until he backed her up against a tree Where she had nowhere else to go. And Sansa doesn't even... And even after watching all of that happen... We're jumping the gun on what happens in the next chapter. No, we are, but Sansa just observed her betrothed attack an innocent child who did nothing wrong. Then attack... Okay, maybe she doesn't care about that. But then attacked her sister and was screaming obscenities, filthy words, nasty words, and going at her with castle-forged steel. Trying to kill her. And had And her. it seems like he had her against the tree and there was nowhere else for Ari to go now. And then when he raised his sword hand up to go for the kill, Nymeria came out of absolutely nowhere. Nymeria saved Arya's life. Yes. Cause to be George clear. Even, George even made it so. Nymeria jumped and took out his sword arm. If that didn't happen, Arya would be gravely wounded. Or dead. Probably dead. Because she's very small. Yes. I mean, Ari is eight or seven. And or very, very skinny for that point. age. They say that over and over again. Over and again. over and over again. Like, Ari is She's like a rail, eight. too. Um, she is a little kid. She's a second grader. And a skinny one. Yes. So, Nymeria saves her life from Joffrey. Yes. Um, Ari is... So, he's saying, get it off, get it off. Ari's voice cracked like a whip. Nymeria... The direwolf let go of Joffrey and moved to Arya's side. The prince lay in the grass, whimpering, cradling his mangled arm. This is the best part, though. She didn't hurt you. Much. Much. Arya cutting deeper than swords again. She just turned his own words on him. And she's fearless, though. Much. She doesn't give a crap. And now she picks up his sword, too. She She picked up Lion's Tooth, where it had fallen, and stood over him, holding the sword with both hands. Joffrey made a scared, whimpery sound as he looked up at her. No, he said. Don't hurt me. I'll tell my mother. You leave him alone, Sansa screamed at her sister. Now, where was you leave her alone? When when... he was trying to kill your sister. Correct. You never said you leave her alone. Did she? No. But she tells Arya when it's the flip side. Now she's got the sword. He's on the ground. She finds a voice to say... You leave him alone. She actually only yelled at Sansa. Or or Sansa only yelled at Arya. Yeah, that's the point I'm making here. Absolutely. And then here it is again. No, during the craziness, she says, stop it. When right after Arya picked up a rock and threw it at him, she said, stop it. No, she says, no, no, stop it, stop it. Both of you, you're spoiling it. Yes, and then later she says... 
when Arya threw a rock at his head. And okay, the horse when she field. was just yelling "Stop it! Stop it!" to both of them, I'm not gonna hate on her for that. But when Joffrey had Arya cornered against a tree, she doesn't say a word. When Arya had Joffrey cornered, she says, "You leave him alone." Yes, that is a big deal. That's a big deal. She didn't care that Joffrey was about to kill Arya. But she does care that Arya might kill Joffrey. Yes, when it was flipped. Exactly. Yes. Arya whirled and heaved the sword into the air, putting her whole body into the throw. The blue steel flashed in the sun as the sword spun out over the river. It hit the water and vanished with a splash. Joffrey moaned. Arya ran off to her horse, Nymeria loping at her heels. After they had gone, Sansa went to Prince Joffrey. His eyes were closed in pain, his breath ragged. Sansa knelt beside him. Joffrey, she sobbed. Oh, look what they have did. Look what they did. My poor prince. Don't be afraid. I'll ride to the Holdfast and bring help for you. Tenderly, she reached out and brushed back his soft blonde hair. His eyes snapped open and looked at her, and there was nothing but loathing there. Nothing but the vilest contempt. Then go. He spit at her. And don't touch me. So even after all of this... She doesn't go after her sister. Nope. Like, Arya, wait up. I would have been like, Arya, wait up. Let's to get hell, out of here. To hell with this. Yes, we got to go get him help, okay? We'll tell them. But... But I'm going with Arya. I'm going to find my sister. And if I can get help for you, I'll do that. But I'm going for my sister first. I would still have sent help, even as vile of a human being as he is. But I would have gone after my sister first. Yes, but I'm finding my sister first. I'm going with Arya, then Arya and me are going to the camp, explaining what happened. And getting help. And then saying, you gotta go over there and help him. Joffrey tried to kill Arya, and Nymeria saved him. Saved her. But he has a bite, and but, he's laying but, there. And... But Nymeria bit his sword arm to stop him from killing her. But that's not what she does. No. And I guess we'll pick up with that. Yeah, in, yeah, in, right, because this I think is, Ned's chapter is the one that immediately follows this, if it I'm is, not yes. mistaken, where Ned's been awake for like four days or something right. like that looking <laughs> for Arya, which also just tells you a little bit about how tough Arya is, because Arya is missing for four days. Arya runs into the woods and is determined not to be found by the Lannisters, basically. And she's brave, too, because woods at night are Scary. pitch black. Yes, she's completely alone. Now, now she has Nymeria with her, which makes her feel tougher. Because nothing is going to come near her while she's sleeping while Namiri is there. No, it's just, it's very cool. <laughs> yeah, she has, she has the best bodyguard ever. Yes. She has a bodyguard that's connected to her brain. Yeah. So when she's in danger, Namiria knows instantly and comes. And it's not a human bodyguard. This thing is like. <laughs> this thing can run like 50 miles an hour. Right, right, and, right. and you won't even hear it until it's leaping at you. And you're like, and you know that the dire wolf is there for like one second. Like that, like the guy who was trying to kill Bran. Yes, yeah, so now this is two chapters pretty close together where wolves came in and saved the Starks' lives. Yes. But yes, but we will pick up with everything that happens in the aftermath, which you kind of see throughout a couple of chapters because they continue fighting about this in the future. But if you have any thoughts or anything that we missed in this uh, analysis of A Game of Thrones, Sansa 1, please leave it in the comments below. Absolutely. Have a good one, everyone.